The reigning Formula 2 champion, Theo Porcher, is without a Formula 1 seat for the 2024 season. Likewise, Felipe Drogovic, the 2022 F2 champion, finds himself without a racing seat. Oscar Piastri, who now races for McLaren, spent a year on the sidelines after winning the F2 championship in 2021. Following their championship victories, the last three F2 champions have encountered difficulty securing a Formula 1 racing seat in the subsequent year. Despite Formula 2 historically serving as the primary entry point into Formula 1 and producing numerous talents, there has been a noticeable lack of interest from Formula 1 teams in recent junior driver champions. A factor contributing to the diminished impressiveness of an F2 championship win in the eyes of teams is when the driver secures victory in their third or fourth year in F2, as exemplified by Nick de Vries, Felipe Drogovic, and Theo Pourcher. F1 teams tend to find drivers who clinch the championship in their rookie year more appealing. However, even this achievement doesn't guarantee a racing seat in the following year. Oscar Piastri serves as a notable example. He clinched the championship in his rookie year in 2021, but lacked an F1 contract for 2022. Instead, he assumed the role of a test and reserve driver for Alpine. The uncertainty persisted into 2023 until McLaren offered him a contract. Many times, teams opt for drivers who showed strong performances in their rookie season and are part of the team's junior academy. However, securing a seat also hinges on a bit of luck, as availability of an F1 seat plays a crucial role in determining their opportunity to join the team at that particular time. Another contributing factor is sponsorships. Sponsorships have long been integral to Formula One, especially for smaller teams relying heavily on sponsor money to fund car development and operational costs. Consequently, these teams tend to favor drivers who attract more sponsors, often prioritizing financial backing over, let's say, drivers' accomplishments in junior categories. This reality underscores one of the formidable challenges for young drivers attempting to break into Formula One. Another straightforward consideration is the lack of available seats. Despite a new Formula Two champion emerging each year, not every year sees a corresponding vacancy in the Formula One lineup. This challenge appears to be even more pronounced in the coming years, with approximately three-fourths of the current grid being on a much younger side. The only way most F2 drivers stay connected with Formula One is through test, reserve or simulator driver roles. When young drivers don't envision the possibility of racing in Formula One within the next few years, they often redirect their focus towards competing in alternative categories, such as endurance racing and Formula E. These alternative categories offer significant opportunities and are, in many respects, more appealing than remaining solely as a reserve or simulation driver for an F1 team. Though it's exceedingly rare for a driver from another category to transition back into Formula One, Nick de Vries, however, achieved this recently showcasing that it is indeed possible. Even though his stint in F1 was short-lived, the key takeaway is that staying connected with Formula One can be advantageous. This affiliation increases the chances of seizing unexpected opportunities that may arise in the future. Moreover, when drivers transition from other racing categories and find themselves in an age group significantly older than the rookies, there's already a heightened expectation for them to excel. This scenario is precisely what seemed to go awry with Nick de Vries. Having won the F2 and Formula E championships, and with his strong performance in his maiden Formula 1 outing at Monza in 2022, expectations were already a bit too high for the Dutchman. It's crucial to recognise that sometimes the driver may not be fully prepared, and even though he won't be considered as a complete rookie, I think he needed some more time in the car to get comfortable. But it is what it is. I think that rookies deserve at least two years in Formula 1. The first year is usually dedicated to understanding the intricacies of the car and the tracks, while the second year is where they really demonstrate their potential and the development progress. That's why I really admired Williams' decision to retain Logan Sargent instead of replacing him with someone more experienced or a different rookie. Now, if Sargent doesn't deliver this season, it could pose a significant challenge for Williams or any team to retain him, given the considerable lineup of drivers eagerly awaiting their chance in a Formula One car. Another element worth considering is the inclination of smaller teams to favor experienced drivers over young rookies. For instance, in 2021, Haas enlisted two rookies to drive for them. Come 2023, Haas opted for a more experienced lineup featuring Nico Hulkenberg and Kevin Magnussen, a decision that seemed to work well for them. Considering their car's lack of race pace and high degradation, the drivers performed quite decently and weren't involved in any major crashes. And let's not forget about Liam Lawson, who replaced Daniel Ricciardo at AlphaTauri and secured points in his third Grand Prix. He consistently delivered robust performances and appeared remarkably comfortable in the car, and even qualified ahead of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez in Singapore. Despite these impressive displays, 
Red Bull ultimately chose to stick with Ricardo. Furthermore, last year's F2 season marked the series champion scoring the lowest points and wins compared to the previous champions in the series since its inception in 2017. Despite a closely contested championship battle, the 2023 Formula 2 season appeared somewhat average. As for potential opportunities, Theo's most viable option could be with Sauber, although it seems somewhat unlikely in the near future as Joe is performing really well in that seat. However, the landscape isn't entirely discouraging. Driver retirements or switches to other racing categories can create vacant seats and teams often replace underperforming drivers. Some teams are notably assertive in responding to drivers' performances. While such opportunities are relatively rare, they present golden chances for aspiring junior drivers to showcase their capabilities as potential F1 drivers. Looking ahead to 2024, with numerous F1 drivers' contracts set to expire, there may be shuffles, promotions, and replacements towards the end of the season. So there is a significant probability of some new drivers joining the Formula One grid. And as I've previously mentioned in my other videos, I believe Formula One could benefit from the addition of a couple more teams to the current roster, creating additional opportunities for emerging young drivers. While there are prospects of Andretti joining the grid in the coming years, certainty about this development remains uncertain for now. Uh, and that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. And I've noticed that 99% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so please subscribe as well. It would really help me out. Also, comment down below which new driver you think will get a Formula One seat in 2025, and I'll see you guys in the next video.